On January 2nd, 1967, the United States Air Force launched an operation that defined a false track upon which both Vietnamese and Soviet armies would align their strategies throughout the Vietnam War. Operation Bolo, led by the celebrated American pilot Robin Olds, was one of the greatest deceptions of the conflict in which the U.S. managed to mimic fake entire bomber formations and secretly spy on the North Vietnamese with only a handful of NSA aircraft. The North Vietnamese would lose one-third of their full MiG-21 arsenal to the ruse, and the Americans proved their strategic creativity with success after success over the enemy. Aerial Challenges Aerial warfare had been proving itself a nefarious affair during the Vietnam War, resulting in bitter losses for the United States. By 1966, air-to-air -air combat over Vietnam had taken only 10 American planes within two years' time. The main culprits were Soviet-produced MiGs. The United States had only scored 30 aerial kills. It was a considerable underperformance when taking into account the technological and resource superiority of the world powers. Furthermore, the Air Force couldn't target Hanoi airfields due to the risk of injuring Chinese or Soviet representatives. If this were to happen, the Soviet Union and China could have an excuse to officially join the fight. Fully aware of the American limitations, the Viet Cong adopted inventive tactics to fight its allegedly superior enemy. One such tactic was sending MiGs to scare American pilots in less agile bombers into ejecting their bombs. The Soviet-supplied fighters would return to their base, oftentimes without actually engaging the American planes. The situation got even worse for the United States during Operation Rolling Thunder in 1966. The American bombing campaign was met by MiGs that went past the U.S. escort fighters and took down several U.S. bombers flying on relatively predictable paths. The North Vietnamese were supported by China and North Korea, resulting in a well-executed defense strategy using air-to-air -air and surface-to-air weapons. The F-4 Phantom II The primary aircraft used during Operation Bolo were F-4 Phantom II supersonic jets. Such a plane, initially designed for the U.S. Navy, was first flown in May 1958. The F-4C version used by the Air Force took over for the first time in 1963. By the time the production of the aircraft ended, 5,000 planes had been produced, 2,600 of which were acquired by the U.S. Air Force. However, it entered service until 1964. The aircraft was highly regarded for its reliable and fast engines, ease of handling, and its capacity to carry eight air-to-air -air missiles. The Phantom was armed with the short-range AIM-9 Sidewinder and the medium-range AIM-7 Sparrow. Both exhibited reliability problems during their deployment in Vietnam. On the North Vietnamese side, the main fighter was the Soviet-provided Mikoyan Gurevich-21, a short-range interceptor armed with two short-range Vimpel K-13 missiles. These Soviet planes were fast, agile, and capable of flying at high altitudes and supersonic speed. They outperformed the American F-105 bombers in almost every aspect, and were therefore an excellent plane to fight the U.S. forces. Most of these attacks performed by MiG-21s were hit-and-runs, attacking the rear of American strike formations, which let the MiGs attack and retreat. Colonel Robin Olds Air Force pilot Colonel Robin Olds attained recognition as a force to be reckoned with during World War II. During his run as commander of the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing in Vietnam, he became a national military figure respected and admired for his aggressive and effective leadership. His father was a World War I pilot, thus he grew up in the military aviation environment. After attending West Point, he received pilot training and afterwards was sent to Europe, where he excelled shooting down five enemy fighters from a P-38 Lightning, being only 22 years old. By the end of the war, he had achieved 12 victories. Olds proceeded to command operational units and to carry out staff jobs, however he was unable to secure a role in the Korean War. When the Vietnam War broke out, he sought a combat posting and succeeded. Towards the end of 1966, Colonel Robin Olds was Commander-in-Chief of the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing stationed at the Ubon Royal Thai Air Force Base. His magnetic personality and bravery in battle gained him the respect of his team, which became the main anti-MiG wing during the conflict. The Plan By the time Robin Olds joined the battle, the U.S. Air Force was no longer allowed to bomb airfields. Enemy aircraft could only be taken down in the air, an action easier said than done. The Vietnamese only sent their MiGs when they acknowledged themselves at an advantage. For this reason, Olds and Tactics Officer Captain John Stone made a plan to draw out the North Vietnamese pilots with a fake 105 bombing formation of F-4 Phantom II jets. The strategy? They planned a coordinated attack by a West Force made of seven Phantom fighters from Ubon, and an East Force conformed by seven more Phantoms from the Da Nang Air Base in South Vietnam. 
The West Force would follow the F-105 strike paths, while the East Force would fly over alternate airfields, preventing any of the MiGs from fleeing to Chinese territory. The plan also called on six F-105 bombers to protect the Phantom Jets from surface-to-air missiles. Radar jamming would be carried out by EB-66s, with four flights of Starfighter interceptors serving as escorts. The F-4 flights over the airfields would happen every five minutes, so that any MiGs trying to land would be engaged and forced to run away until they ran out of fuel. The mission was also set up so that no other U.S. planes were present. This allowed the three flights of Phantom Jets to engage without having to identify their target, as required by the rules of engagement. To get the North Vietnamese to buy the ruse, the Phantom pilots would mimic the routes, altitudes, and speeds of the F-105 bombers and use F-105 voice communications. Their jamming pods were exchanged for those of the F-105s, thus their electronic signature made them look like bombers. The commanding officer of the 7th Air Force, General William Mamier, approved the plan in December 1966. It was codenamed Operation Bolo, as a reference to the Bolo, the Filipino martial arts weapon. This machete-like weapon had a history of fooling the opponent into believing it was not a weapon until they were too close to escape the blade. One of the most essential facets of Operation Bolo involved the use of C-130B2s for spying on North Vietnamese radio communications during the mission. Although these were technically Air Force aircrafts, they were controlled by the National Security Agency, which refused to send the modified Hercules planes on most missions. There were only 20 of these planes flying worldwide, which meant their use was reserved for the activities deemed most important by the NSA. Olds wanted the C-130B2 aircraft to let the pilots know the Vietnamese were not falling for the ruse. The Pacific Air Force has decided to have everyone along the chain of command cut out the NSA from their activities so that missions like these could be conducted. Silver Dawn codenamed planes were already in the area spying on the Vietnamese, which facilitated their use for Operation Bolo. In case the NSA found out, the Pacific Air Command would have pretended they hadn't known the aircraft was being redirected from their day-to-day -day operations. In order to avoid compromising the wing in charge of operating the reconnaissance aircraft, this was kept out of the planning process. To hide this part of the operation from the rest of the task force, the pilots were told that regular EC-121 radar planes would be collecting intelligence during the operation. Operation Bolo The operation was set for January 1st, 1967, but was postponed to the following day due to bad weather. And once again, due to the fog, the mission did not begin until the afternoon, at 3 p.m. local time. The Americans feared that the North Vietnamese had seen through their ruse when they didn't show up. As it turns out, low clouds delayed their response, and 15 minutes later than they were expected, the first MiGs emerged. The attack began with the first two flights of Phantom II jets in the area. The second flight, led by 8th Technical Fighter Wing Vice Commander Colonel Daniel James, arrived just as the first flight, led by Robin Olds, started to engage. The MiGs seemed to be showing up randomly. Nonetheless, they were following a tactic. One would try to attack the formation's rear, and the other two would emerge to the left front of the formation. All three American formations encountered that tactic. The first scored takedown went to pilot Ralph Wetterhan, who shot an AIM-7 Sparrow at a MiG-21. Team leader Robin Olds would later describe how he shot one of the enemy planes, quote, He never saw me. Behind and lower than him, I could clearly see his silhouette against the sun when I launched two sidewinders. One of them impacted and tore apart his right wing. The third flight to arrive was led by Captain John Stone, who successfully shot a MiG and led another one to the line of fire. By the time the remaining four flight squads arrived, the battle was mostly over. They all retreated to avoid being hit by surface-to-air missiles. East Force from Da Nang never entered North Vietnamese airspace due to the weather. That day marked a great victory for the United States in the Vietnam War. Surprisingly, only 26 fighter jets entered the combat area out of the 56 available, and only 12 of those actually took part in the fight. Scores the Phantom II pilots held up their fingers, indicating how many kills they had scored as they taxied at Ubon. Before that day, the Vietnamese People's Air Force had 16 MiG-21s. By the end of the operation, seven had been destroyed, according to the American pilots, with an additional two unconfirmed shootdowns. The Vietnamese government would not open up about their losses that day until a few years later. They admitted that Operation Bolo had been a devastating blow. Still, they claimed to have only lost five planes and that all of their pilots had landed safely. The North Vietnamese were left dumbfounded by the 7th Air Force operation. Two subsequent BPAF missions had to be aborted, which forced the Soviets and North Vietnamese to ground the MiG-21s to assess the situation and plan ahead the new American tactic. <laughs>